If you've ever wanted guards van lights that you can switch on from one end to the other with a magnet, here at McKinley we'll show you how. We've included this circuit diagram and hopefully you can do a screen grab and print it off and it'll help you follow it along as we go. The soldering is not necessarily for the novice. The subject for the modification is a standard Backman 21 ton guards van. The first thing to do is to disconnect the vertical guardrails as they go into the chassis. There's two on each side. Next to either end, on the flatbed, there are more guardrails, again, to either end, and they should be pulled away from the guards van body. They are a little fragile, but I'm sure any breakages can be sorted with a dab of glue. The body can now be separated from the chassis with the aid of a small flat-bladed screwdriver. To separate the base from the chassis, there are four small locating lugs that need to be pressed in. Next we remove the weight, and this particular example put up a bit of a fight, and we ended up shearing one of the locating spigots. That's no big deal, it'll all glue back in in the end. Here's an example of a previous one that we've made. Sadly, this relay stopped working, but we use it as an example uh, to when we produce more circuit boards. Again, you may choose to do a screen grab here and then print off both the front and the back of the circuit board. We now need to assemble our components. So we have the circuit board that's been cut to size, the relay, three resistors, a capacitor, three diodes and two reed switches. We also need six LEDs for the brake lights and these have been painted black and then painted white to stop any light from bleeding through the paintwork. So now it's time to start soldering. It might be useful to use a piece of blue tack to hold the components down on top of the cutting mat. And the first component to be soldered are the eight contacts of the relay. Now we need to break the continuity between the terminals and to do this we use a steel drill bit and simply twist it until the copper is broken. Once those four strips have been isolated, we move on to the diodes.
These diodes are polarity conscious, so you must put them in the right way around. The same procedure is then carried out on the third diode. Next we make a shorting link from an old resistor leg and then solder that into place. Next we solder into place another shorting link. A third link is then installed. Next, using solder, we short across two of the terminals. Two more terminals are bridged in a similar fashion with the solder.
Next we install the capacitor and the short leg goes to the end where there's just the one diode. It's a 100 microfarad capacitor. Moving on to the resistors, you can either insert the three resistors into the three different holes and solder them, or twist the legs together of the resistors and then solder them through the one hole. The reason we use three resistors rather than one is it makes it easier to solder the wires which run up to the lamps individually. The two reed switches are then soldered together, bent through 90 degrees so that they're horizontal and then the legs are both bent down, ready to be soldered to the circuit board. Next, a thin wire is soldered onto the connecting legs of the reed switches. Back onto the circuit board. Now we turn our attention to the LEDs and they're all red LEDs they're painted first black and then white to stop the paint leaching through the sides and then with a very very fine pad we buff away the white and black paint to reveal the red lens and this we do on all six then moving to the lamp irons we snip away the top section of the top lamp irons. Then offering up the LED we can see how it sits. With a 0.8 millimeter drill we drill the holes into the gas van. Next, we remove the upper portion of the central lamp bracket. This will allow the LED to fit flushly against the side of the guards van. You need to scrape any paint that's been oversprayed onto the legs of the LEDs. And this is where you need to remember that the cathode is the positive, and that is the longer of the two legs, and it's at the top. It has the curved top of the lamp. 
The anode is the flat section at the bottom and this is the one we're marking there with a pair of snips. So once you've marked it, pull it out and then we cut it off at that length. The next thing to do is tin them. And then using a thin black equipment wire, and the reason we use black is purely for camouflage, is we solder on those two legs. Drilling a hole straight through into the cabin now, we feed in those two wires straight through the first two holes and then through the second. And then hopefully as you pull the wires tight, the LED should come snugly against the stanchion. As you run the cables into the guard's van, the upper cable of the LED, you need to tie a knot in each of the wires. So when you get all 12 wires through into the cabin of the guard's van, you will know which ones are the cathodes, i.e. the positive, and which are the anodes, the negative. So a knot in every cathode cable. Taking the three positive cables from one end of the guard's van, you simply strip back the insulation and solder them to one bank of resistors. If you leave the knots in, it will make it easier to differentiate one cable from another. So one end of the guard's van go on one set of resistors and the others to the other side. That just leaves the six negative cables and they are twisted together and soldered as just one lump onto the circuit board. Turning to the pickups, we now super glue two sets of pickups to the underside of the guard's van chassis. Taking care that the springs on the pickups stay in contact with the inside surfaces of the wheels and that the pickups are central. Next we need to solder a set of cables to connect both pickups together. Once they're connected we can solder another set of cables which take the track power from the pickups into the body of the guards van. Finally, the last piece of soldering is getting those two cables onto the circuit board. Now it's time for the big switch on. So we turn on track power and and when they go off this end they must turn on on the other end. And there we have it. All we need to do now is to reassemble. Next we put back the weight onto the top of the chassis and there are some small niches in the plate and we bring the cables through one of those. Once that's in place we can get the bed of the guards van back in place and again with those cables on that little cutout we can then push down 
the bed of the guards van until it clicks into place. Make sure that there's a little bit of slack on those cables underneath the guards van bed. Now we've got the awkward little bit of reef fitting the whole assembly back into the body of the guards van and tucking the cables in carefully we turn it upside down and then push it in towards the guards van body. Do make sure that all the cables are free and not jammed between the circuit board and the body. Once it's in place, you can push it down until it makes contact with the reed switches against the roof of the guards van. Then all we need to do is make sure that the cables from the lights aren't fouled and that they pass through the centre of the guards van. Once the guard's van body is secure to the bed, we pop it back on the tracks and make sure that it works perfectly. And we do this prior to refitting all the handrails. This is a challenging opportunity, but one that's well worth doing and will add a great deal to the running of your freight trains.